السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائلنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Inshallah, today we will uh, start with uh, hadith number 18. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, hadith number 19. We finished the 18 last time. So, inshallah, we will be starting with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his protection. So, عن ابن عباس عن رضي الله عنه قال كنت خلف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوما فقال يا غلام إني أعلمك كلمات احفظ الله يحفظك احفظ الله تجده تجاهك وإذا سألت فاسأل الله وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ So this is, let's stop here and start with the first part of the hadith. Uh, this hadith is on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas, uh, and he said, One day I was behind the Prophet wasallam. And he was riding on the same mount behind Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Sayyidina Muhammad said, Oh, young man, I shall teach you some words of advice. So he said to him, Be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him with you. So, this is uh, an advice. This is a lesson for us. When you are with your child, then talk to him. If you are on a ride, if he is in the same car with you, then talk to him. This is a one-to-one -one class between you and your child. Teach him. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did with Ibn Abbas radiallahu an. So he said to him, Ya Ghulam. He addressed him. Ya Ghulam. Oh boy. Oh young man. Oh, oh young boy. So Ibn Abbas was still young at that time. And he heard this advice from Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sayyidina Muhammad said to him, I am going to teach you a few words. So what are the words of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Normally, the, the words of Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah, are of simple expressions. And this is what we will see in this hadith. But these simple expressions have comprehensive meaning. They have so much information. They have so much uh, knowledge. They have so much wisdom. So when you give advice, Make it short, don't make it a long one, so that the, the one who, who is hearing you would not get bored. So these are all lessons for, for, for you when you want to give advice to people, for everyone, when anyone want to wanna, wanna be uh, 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 following the steps of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a special category as a teacher. 
So you have to have a style. You have to have a way, a good way that would attract the attention of the one who is hearing. And that that would be in a way that is simple, first of all, and easy to understand. So he said to him, So be mindful of Allah. Be mindful uh, of the orders of Allah. Follow the orders of Allah. So what will happen? Allah will protect you when you need him. We always need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in times of calamities, especially in times of hardship. So when we are uh, traveling, then what we do, we have some food to take, we have some drinks to take, we have some clothes to take. So we prepare ourselves. So the same way, we always need to prepare ourselves for the life we are living because this life is a journey. It's a journey that will take us from this dunya to the day after. So we have to be prepared in this dunya. And we have to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he would protect us later in the day after. When we follow the orders in this dunya, we will be winners in the day after. We will be protected. We will be of those who will enjoy the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So during the time of ease, be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't wait until it is the, it's, it's a hardship time and you start to pray, you start to make dua and, and you start to get connected to Allah and to, no. Be connected to Allah all the time. And you get connected to Allah through his book. Learn the Quran, read the Quran. Try to understand the Quran because this is a complete method, a complete successful program. If someone uh, follows the 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 orders of the, of the Quran, so be mindful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, what will happen? So these words, these are precious words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching Ibn Abbas, which is in turn a, a lesson to all of us. Then he says, إِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ الله. So if you ask, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alone. Do not go to people just to ask them for favors. No, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Making a lot of dua. So dua is the essence of ibadah. Because it manifests our need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not belittle the power of dua, especially the dua of the mom to her children. This, is, this goes like magic. So the mom cares about her children not only for this dunya. It's not just to provide them with all their needs. No. The wise mom should know that her kids, whom she loves uh, uh, a lot, they're going to die one day. And when they die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to uh, uh, reward them or to punish them. 
But if she is mindful in this dunya, she will do her best so that Allah will reward her children. So she would raise a good, good children so that they will be winners in the day after. So she, she wants them to be victorious in the, in the day after. So dua, when we make dua, we do it not only for the dunya, but we do it for the, uh, for, for, uh, the akhirah also. Yeah. And as I just mentioned, don't go to people and ask for, for help. And if you con constantly ask someone, then what will happen if you go to a person and you ask him for something? And then a few days later, you go to him and you ask him for something. A few days later, you go to him and you ask for something. Then what will happen? If, if someone consistently, uh, consistently and constantly ask people for, for help, they will dislike him or they would get angry. This is dunya. These are people. But the more you ask Allah, the more Allah would love you. So let's think about it in another way. We are all servants of Allah. And we are all poor for his help, for his uh, uh, protection, for his mercy. So how can we ask the poor and the unable and leave the rich and the able? How can we do that? So we have to direct our asking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in dunya, when we ask people for help, then we are humbling ourselves in front of them. And... Actually, the act of humility is more benefiting in front of Allah. So we should, we should only ask Allah. If you ask, then ask Allah. And asking Allah is a great form, great form of worship. It's a great implementation of the Tawheed. Because you are manifesting your need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're manifesting your you need for Allah and you are manifesting that his greatness and his ability is going to help you. So what do you do? If you have anything in this dunya you want to take a decision then ask Allah what to do ask Allah what to choose so what we do we always uh, uh, pray Salatul Istikhara and Salatul Istikhara is asking Allah for help to choose the best so if there is something that you want to do and there are people who do istikhara for every single decision, uh, important decision in their life. So if they want to travel, Ya Allah, should we travel or not? They do salat al-istikhara. If, if they want to uh, uh, do something important, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for help, for guidance. So, so what is Salat al-Istikhara? It's two rakahs. We pray two rakahs, regular, any two simple rakahs. And at the end, when, uh, when we end the prayer, we ask Allah uh, with a special dua that's called dua al-Istikhara. So the, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us how to do Salat al-Istikhara, how to make the dua. He said, إِذَا هَمَّ بِالْأَمْرِ فَلْيَرْكَعْ رَكْعَتَيْنِ ثُمَّ يَقُولُ So you pray two rakahs, and then at the end, when you, when you do the salam, you say, 
اللهم إني أستخيرك بعلمك وأستقدرك بقدرتك So, oh Allah, I ask you for the good by your knowledge and I ask you for the strength by your power. Okay? وَأَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ فَضْلِكَ الْعَظِيمِ And I ask you for some of your immense abundant favor. فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ you have the power, and I don't. وَتَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ You know, and I don't know. وَأَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ You are the one, you are the knower of the unseen worlds. You know everything. اللهم إن كنت تعلم أن هذا الأمر خير لي So, oh Allah, if you know that, this uh, this thing, this affair is good for me, is good for me, fi dini, for uh, in, my, in my deen, in my religion, wa ma'ashi, my livelihood, livelihood, and wa aqibati amri, and the end of my affairs. Okay, so, ya Allah, so you have something? that you want to choose. You say, Ya Allah, you choose one of the two things and you make the Salatul Istikhara. Okay, so if you want if you want to travel, you say, Ya Allah, I'm going to do Istikhara because I am traveling. And you you make your intention that you are traveling and you do the Istikhara for that. You ask Allah for guidance in that affair, in this in this traveling. So you say, if this traveling is good for me in my deen, my livelihood, and the end of my affairs, and uh, uh, so wa and its con conclusion at the end, li. Li. So then decree it for me, make it happen. وَإِن كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُ أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرَ Or if you know that uh, this, uh, this, this affair is bad for me, is, is not good for me in my religion, in, in my livelihood, and at the end of my affair, so فَصْرِفْهُ عَنِّي وَصْرِفْنِي عَنِّي so, Ya Allah, uh, uh, let it go away and let me leave this thing that I am thinking of doing. Waqdur liyal khair and decree what is khair for me. Thumma raddini and make me content. Make me content. So, this is how we do Salatul Istikhar. And some people say, okay, we will uh, do Salatul Istikhar at night before bedtime. And uh, we will, we will uh, uh, wait for a dream to clarify what, what's, what will happen. Sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't. So there is no need for a dream. If you don't see a dream, what do you do? You say, okay, what do I do? I am not going to do anything, no. Sometimes just how things go is the answer to your istikhara. So if you, if you did not see any dream to clarify what, if you should do this thing or not, it's okay. You might not see any dream. But look at how things are going. If we say our we said our example is I am I am traveling uh, to so and so place. Okay, see, did you get a visa? Was there any problems uh, uh, booking the flight? Was there was the flight canceled? Uh, did anything happen in the airport that prevented you from traveling? 
This is the answer to your istikhar. Subhanallah. So we have to know how to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what indications he will give us. It might be very clear, it might not. So this is the uh, first part of the hadith. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes on giving advice to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu and he said, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكْ So, what, what happens? Uh, just, uh, just remember that uh, if someone, if someone uh, asks you, uh, uh, if, if, the whole, if the whole nation just got together to help you, to benefit you of something, they're not going to benefit you except for something that Allah has predestined to you. The same thing, if and even if the whole nation just gathered to harm you, they will not be able to do any harm to you except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that thing to happen. So this is very important. So they will, they will not harm you except what Allah had already prescribed against you. So do not get sad if you need something badly and it did not happen. Allah did not predestine that for you. And no matter who are, how many people are there to help you get it, you will not. Because it is all the qadr. It is all the destiny. So we have to, to believe in the qadr and qadr. So this is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to, the, uh, to this young man, young boy, actually. And then uh, the, the last few words, رُفِعَتِ الْأَقْلَامُ وَجَثَّةِ الصُّحُفِ The pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. The phrase of the pen have been lifted and the pages have dried is a reference to the sacred tablet. Everything is written there. So nothing written on that tablet will change. And thus it is a, a reaffirmation of Allah's divine will. And brings, this brings more tranquility, more peace to the believer that everything has happened. Whatever is happening is from Allah. It's not from people. People cannot do anything if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not predestined that thing to happen. Now, if we link this hadith to hadith number 10, in hadith number 10, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ثم ذكر الرجل يطيل السفر أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام 
فأنا يستجاب له. So in hadith number 10, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the case of a man who, who having, uh, um, uh, who is on a, an, on a far journey. So that person is uh, uh, disheveled, uh, he's dusty, uh, and he spreads his, out his hands to the sky asking, Oh Lord, oh Lord. Uh, and he is asking Allah for, for things. But his food is haram, it's unlawful. He's eating something unlawful. His drink is haram. His clothing is haram. The way he dresses is, is not halal. And he has been nourished with haram. And this is a very important message to the, to the person who is in charge of the family, of spending, of giving money to the, to the family. This money should all be halal. If you go to your job, you have seven hours to work, then you have to work seven hours. You have to. If you work less, without the uh, permission of, the, uh, of, of your boss, then that would be uh, unlawful money that you, your salary. There is a portion of unlawful money in your salary. So you have to be careful. So this person who is on a long journey and who is asking Allah, oh Lord, oh Lord, I want this, I want that, and everything, in him and about him is nourished with haram. So how can his supplication be answered? In another, in another narration, the same hadith, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Okay, so be mindful of Allah and you will find Allah with you. So, تعرف إلى الله في الرخاء يعرف يعرفك في الشدة. Recognize and acknowledge Allah in times of ease and prosperity, and Allah will remember you in times of adversity. وعلم أن ما أخطأك لم يكن ليصيبك. No. That what has passed you by, or, or you have failed to attain, is not going to befall you. It will not happen. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ And what has befallen you was not going to pass you by. So again, this is all predestined. And know that. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ النَّصْرَ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ Victory comes with patience. So there are so many uh, uh, unpleasant things in, in, our, in, in this life. Because it is not a life that, um, uh, a life of ease. No. It's a life of difficulties. Why? Because if everything is easy here, so how can we enjoy the easiness of, of, of Jannah, of paradise? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to, to try people. He wants to test people in, in times of uh, problems. What have you done? Were you patient or were you not patient? إن الله مع الصابرين والله يحب الصابرين الله is with patient people and Allah loves patient people He loves people with patience showing patience practicing patience وعلم أن النصر مع الصبر وأن الفرج مع الكرب So know that Relief is with affliction. 
whenever there is a problem, there is a solution to the problem. We need to ask Allah for help. We need to ask Allah for guidance. So the third, the third point is يسرى, and hardship is there with ease. So there is ease with hardship. And Allah said it in Surah Al-Injirah, so with, with hardship, there is ease, there is a solution. But we have to practice patience. And actually, the higher maqam than practicing patience is acceptance. So we accept everything that Allah has predestined to us. And this is a very high uh, maqam that uh, people need to be so much close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to practice this, this maqam. It is, it is uh, an opening from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you if you have uh, acceptance of everything that, that happens to you. Someone very close in the family dies. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Practice patience, practice rida. Rida. I am, I accept everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when making dua, we should have sincerity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should trust in him that he will answer our dua. And this happens in one of uh, many ways. So he answers the dua, he might answer the dua immediately. You Your dua will prevent a calamity from happening. So it's always a win-win case. And in Surah Ghafir, Ayah 60, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call upon me. Allah said, call upon me. I will respond to you. So raising the hands is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do when he made dua. And this is uh, also something nice to, to, to do. When you make dua to Allah, raise your hands. Raise your hands. And some people feel the barakah of raising the hand when they make the dua. They feel that their hands are heavy. And that's because of the malaika. That's because of the angels. In Ghazwat Badr, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu made a very long dua. He raised his hands and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for victory over the non-believers. So be firm in your dua. Make your dua. So when you make your dua, be firm. What does this mean? Do not say, oh Allah, forgive me if you wish. No. Just say, oh Allah. Mercy. Oh Allah, just be firm with your dua. And always remember that the best time to make your dua is before Fajr, uh, Fajr gets in. And um, the hadith says, the narration says, in the law. So Allah waits till when uh, one third of the first part of the night is over, then he descends to the lowest heaven and he says, is there any, anyone uh, who is making tawbah, who is repenting? Is there anyone who is asking for, for anything? 
هل من داع is there someone who is asking for dua حتى ينفجر الفجر until it's the day break so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer the call of those people so try to get up before fajr before fajr gets in and try to uh, make wudu pray to rakas and talk then talk to Allah ask Allah for anything you want so uh, always always there is something very important that always remember that when allah answers answers your dua you need to do something you need to thank him why because he said wala in shakartum la azidannakum if you thank if you thank then i will increase you so this is the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, this is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his servants. In the next hadith, uh, Sayyidina uh, Ibn uh, Abi Mas'ud, Abi Mas'ud al-Ansari radiallahu anhu said, قال, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, إن مما أدرك الناس من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فاصنع ما شئت. So Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, the Prophet said, one of the warnings of the previous prophets, which has been conveyed to people, is that if you do not, uh, if you have no modesty, if you don't have any shyness, we like. People will claim freedom. I'm free. I can say anything. I can do anything. But Muslims are controlled by rules. So we have we have to scale our actions. We know that we are going to die and we know that we are going to be resurrected again and we know that we are going to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that Allah is going to ask us for all our deeds or our actions or our words so we are not free. But if someone has no, no shyness then he can do whatever he wants. Why? Does he not think of the day after? We can understand this hadith in another way. We can understand it in a way that if the action is halal, then you do not care about people and you do it. The first part is someone does the action and he doesn't care about people, but that action is wrong. But the second one, if the halal, if the action is halal, then you don't care. You don't care about people. If they see you doing it or not, you don't care. Because it's, you're doing something halal. Why would you think about it? So, but there is one point. Shyness should be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from people. If there is a, a sin, don't say, oh, this is a small sin. It's okay. It's a small sin. I will forgive. I will ask Allah for forgiveness. No, don't do that. People of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, do not belittle the sin, but think whom you have disobeyed. If you don't have shyness, then you can do whatever you want. And this is, as I mentioned, this is a warning. 
This is a warning. Next hadith is connected to this hadith, actually. If you are doing something good, then you have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are on the right path. So you don't care. So Abu Amr radiallahu anhu قال قلت يا رسول الله قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا غيرك قال قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم So this is uh, uh, Abu Amr uh, uh, he, uh, he said I said, oh, messenger of Allah, tell me something about Islam, which I can, I can ask no one but you. And uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he gave the answer and he said to him, say, I believe in Allah and then be steadfast. So we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who, who are steadfast on the right path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised those people when he said in the, in the Holy Quran, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ Indeed, those who have said, O oh Lord, our Lord is Allah, and then remained on the right course, on the right path, so the angels will descend upon those people, upon them. And they, they would say, do not fear, do not get scared, and do not grieve, do not grieve. And they, they, will, they will also say to them, receive good tidings, receive glad tidings, good news, of paradise. So they have a bushra, they have good news. Who? Those people who said, our Lord is Allah, and they kept uh, clinging to this word by applying everything that, that relates to this word. So what is this paradise? This is which those people were promised. So when uh, applying this hadith, someone came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is mentioned in the next hadith. عن أبي جابر عبد الله uh, عن أبي عبد الله جابر بن عبد الله الأنصاري رضي الله عنه أن رجلا سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أرأيت إذا صليت المكتوبات وصمت رمضان وأحللت الحلال وحرمت الحرام ولم أزد على ذلك شيئا أأدخل الجنة؟ قال نعم So someone came to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said I remember that the, the previous hadith said آمنت بالله ثم استقم This is the advice of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Just say, I believe in Allah and I'm steadfast Okay. Now, someone came to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he asked him He said to him Do you think that if I perform the obligatory prayers Fast in Ramadan uh, and then I 
دو ذا لوفل يعني اي تريت از لوفل ذات ويتش از حلال اند تريت از فوربيدن ذات ويتش از حرام اي دو نوت انكريز ابون ذات اي جست دو ذيس ذيس ثينجز Shall I enter paradise? So is that enough so that I will be in paradise? I will just pray, pray the obligatory prayers, fast in Ramadan, do the halal, and be away from haram. Will I be? Will I be in paradise? And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Naam. So, آمنت بالله ثم استقم. Say I believe in Allah and then be steadfast on that road. And you don't need a lot of worship. You don't need to 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 be to burden with yourself with things. You just do the most important things. These things. Pray, fast, do the halal, and abstain from the haram. And then you will be in paradise. So this is the, uh, the, the condition for being in Jannah. Sometimes, uh we we say that it's not our our intention or our aim is not to be in general but our intention is to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we want to be in jannah it's not because of jannah because sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in jannah And but see, the Muhammad وسلم, is not only in Jannah, he is in the highest maqams of Jannah. So when you make the dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for to be connected, to be reunited with Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in the highest maqams of Al Jannah. So don't say, I want to enter Jannah. No, I want to be in the highest maqams of al-Jannah. Fi al-firdaus al-a'la. Ya Rabb, ridaka wal-firdaus al-a'la. This is our dua. We want you, Ya Allah, to be pleased with us, and we want our final destination to be al-firdaus al-a'la. So, this is what we have for today. And, inshallah, we will continue next week. يا ربنا لك الحمد والشكر والنعمة والرضا. And until we meet again next week, I would leave you now by sending your salam and you're sending my best salam and salawat to our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.